Hello, I'm Dr. Roger Elmer, Advanced Neurospinal Solutions, and today we're going to discuss briefly dystonia. I've been asked by one of my patients to, to discuss it, and what is dystonia? It's a, a change in the tone, an alteration in the tone in specific muscle groups that are causing a spasticity that is literally changing posture. It's causing things to be ineffective in their in their movement patterns, and so what what is it that we've known all along uh, about dystonia? Dystonia is a difficulty in inhibition. I'm not telling certain muscle groups to calm down, to quiet down, to to shut up, if you if you will, and so these. These uh, muscles that are contracting too harshly are not being inhibited by their opposite muscle group. We call it agonist versus antagonist ratio. And, and the nervous system, when you contract a bicep, it inhibits the tricep. When you contract a tricep, it inhibits the, tr the bicep. It happens up in the, in the spinal cord. Well, the spinal cord is a part of the, part of the loop. It creates that loop. But also, you get you get uh, be, it's being told what to do by possibly the the brainstem, but also there's an effect from the basal ganglia and from maybe from the brain itself. And so our job is to figure that all out. So we we've, we've traditionally thought that it was mostly the basal ganglia that is the problem, and so you know we've attacked that uh, the traditional methods of of dealing with it have been physical therapy wise stretching uh, what does stretching do it actually over time will make it worse because we're going to stretch the muscles that are already contracting in the spinal cord when you do that we're we're contracting those muscles that are already contracting we're contracting them harder we're causing them if if, if i'm tilted this way and i stretch i'm causing these muscles to protect themselves and to guard the area even more. So the contraction actually gets worse. But everybody looks at the problem here. It's actually up in the spinal cord or above. The, the real problem is in the spinal cord when we contract the bicep, like I said before, we inhibit the tricep. So if we look at the spinal cord, We say flexion, the flexors and the extensors, the flexors are on one side, one side of, the, this is in the spinal cord in the gray H we call it, but the flexors, when the, when the flexors contract, the, in, the extensors get inhibited or told to be quiet. And so when we contract these muscles, when we stretch them, when we pull on them, we're causing, the, in the spinal cord, we're causing the flexors to contract at a higher level. When that happens, we inhibit the extensors that are already weak. Those are the ones that are back here, right? If, they're, if I'm going forward and, and to, to that corner, to the side, it's these muscles that are becoming weaker. They're, they're becoming weaker, but more importantly, the neurology of those muscles are becoming weaker because they're continuously getting inhibited. And if you don't use it, you're gonna lose it. Well, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And as we, as we continue to do this stretching, it's going to cause the neurology of these muscles to get stronger and their ability to inhibit the extensors becomes more vibrant, more powerful. That's the real issue. Whenever we contract a muscle, it's not the, the neurology of making it contract, it's inhibiting the other muscle that's all, always harder. Inhibition is always harder in the nervous system. It takes more effect. And we've talked about this about stroke, about the dystonia of stroke. And when we stretch it, we're actually causing the neurology of the flexors to become stronger, but also their ability to inhibit the extensors becomes stronger and then that neurology becomes weaker and their ability when, when we try to get them to contract 
their ability to contract becomes weaker, but also their, their ability to inhibit becomes weaker. So now as we try to get that to open up and to get those, the, the neurology of these muscles to work the way they're supposed to, we can't, we can't get it, get it to, to hang in there very much because the, the ability to inhibit has become so weak. So in this effect, with dystonia, the traditional model of stretching doesn't work, but over time it's gonna make it worse. The other thing that we tend to do is give it muscle relaxers. Uh, one of the traditional ones that's become very popular is gabapentin, which is an off-label use of gabapentin. But you know, that is, is that gonna help? It's going to all the muscles, right? It's going to all of them. Do you want all of them to become relaxed? No, you don't. So in, in all of this, we're gonna be, we're gonna be out, out of luck either with a traditional medical model or the physical therapy, traditional physical therapy process. We're gonna to need to attack it uh, on a higher plane uh, to go directly to the area that needs the help and to avoid the areas that don't. D from the new research that we understand now, we're, we're learning that it's not just the basal ganglia, that the systems that are also involved are the visual systems, the hearing systems, the smell system, the taste system, and the touch system. All of these are involved. And you'll notice that you know, on a physical exam that some of these things have been affected and we don't tend to, to relate them to the dystonia, to the effect of dystonia. Dystonia is just an overall impact of a greater problem. And so we need to, when we're, when we're working to find the problem, we need to get all the components of that problem. And we need to work with the weak part of the nervous system and therefore we have to go in through the weak areas of, of the sensory system in order to get it to function the way it's supposed to. And that's what we do here at Advanced Neurospinal Solutions. Now we're, we're gonna be putting online some videos of, of working with a dystonia patient and she's a very faithful patient. She has a scoliosis and she's, she's uh, uh, allowed us to put her uh, one of her first very first visits online where we're tapping the opposing muscle group with a reflex hammer. We love to do that because uh, reflexes are at a higher order than just contraction. If you're trying to contract those weak muscles, it's gonna be very difficult. And why? Because it's difficult to do that anyway because they become so weak. But the inhibitory neurons that are, that are inhibiting the strong muscles and the, small, the strong neurology has become very, very limited in its ability. And so that's why it takes such a, a, a great gargantuan effort. And that's why reflexes work better. They're, they're a faster nerve. They're, they do a higher order, of what I call a higher order detonation in, in getting the effect to happen. So, but in dystonia, understanding that this is a much bigger problem and there's a whole lot of sensory input that is having, a, having an issue in it altogether. There are those that, that say that it is completely a nutritional problem, that it's completely a, 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 a genetic problem. Uh, they'll, they'll go through an entire list of different, different kinds of, of uh, things that it could be. Say, each one of those may have an impact. I'm not disputing that in the least. But at the end of the day, you have to find the area of weakness and work with that and leave the rest alone. <laughs> because if you're, literally, if you're stretching those muscles to try to get them to elongate, you are creating a greater problem down the road. And if you're eliminating other pieces to the problem, you haven't fully solved the issue. So with dystonia, we wanna restore the tone. We wanna bring it back. What governs the tone? The vestibular nuclei in the brainstem. So we're gonna be working a lot with balance, with posture, with the head sensors. We're gonna be working to get that back. We're gonna be working directly also with the basal ganglia in order to restore the, the weak areas, the, the areas that have become weak. We're gonna be working with each of these areas that has become weaker. We're, we're gonna be working with the visual, the hearing, the smell, the taste, and the touch areas uh, in order to restore the, the 
equal bilateral uh, inputs from that from that system. And so if you have any more questions about dystonia, ask. We'll get more, even more specific. I, I invite you to go uh, online and see uh, us working with a dystonia patient uh, and, and watching it change. You've seen quite a few medical or, or, or advanced uh, alternative healthcare providers and they had they had worked really hard to help her uh, and that uh, but the the actual effect that she needed was that we would be working with the weak areas and that we would be working with multi multi uh, modal systems in order to bring that back so we're, we're welcome to and if you have any other questions this is this is our ask the doctor uh, process if you have a question and, and we, we already have it on video, we'll send you a link to the video on YouTube. And if we haven't talked about it, I'll do a video just like this one to give you an answer to your question. If I do a video and it doesn't quite answer the question or it brings up new questions, give us a call, we'll do another video. So I hope you have a wonderful day and, and uh, uh, hope we can, we can help you in the future. We're here for those who can't get help from any other place in any other way. And so uh, our specialties are structural correction and functional neurology. And so I uh, wish you the best, thanks. Still doing that with your eyes. That's no, all right. That's all right. It's all right. It, the, understand, so there's a lot of nerves in there, in here, all the way through here, and in and in the front too, that are hypersensitive right now. And we, you notice when I do some of this, see the see the reaction. It's really fast, and it's harsh. It's harsh. See how this brings her up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this unrotates the chin. This is the SCM, the sternocleidomastoid on this side. The reason the chin was literally, the, the eyes were straight up and down, was this one is contracting and this one's not working. And okay. so I've been slowly ramping this up, which is also saying no to this side, is inhibiting this side. Well, today I have enough energy in this system to be able to, instead of doing it with electricity, which is what we did last time, last mm -hmm. two times, right? Mm -hmm. Been able, I'm able to actually hit the SCM with the reflex hammer and the chin comes down. Sorry about that. Okay. Just burped peppermint oil. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> you know what? It, it's just as good on the way back up. That and peanut butter are just as good either direction. <laughs> Those were good things that when I was a college athlete. Those are important things to know. We did a lot of what I call chucks. <laughs> we ran stairs with 50 pound packs, and you get up to the top and throw up. That's what I call chucks, yeah. Because you up chuck yeah. at the top of the stadium. That sounds like fun. <laughs> it was, oh. It was to die for, and I nearly died. Well, Tom, my brother, did track in high school. That's, that's what I did in college. And yeah. he threw up. Yes, oh, he yeah. did. Yeah, what do you do? He, he was doing was that the 400 or something, and he threw and up the after one, that. I think. No, the eight, yeah, the 400, 200, and 800. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah. Reflex. See, I do this with stroke patients. Mm -hmm. right? Woman came in like this. Yeah. And what did I do? They're all <laughs> tug of war. If you don't tug, there's no war. So all I did was boom, boom, boom. I did boom, 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 boom. It took like four or five to open the elbow all the way. And then within 10 minutes, she had her, her hand flat on my, on my hand. Now, it's a, it's a process. I got a lot of work to do because yeah. it'll go back. This is all happening in the brainstem and the spinal cord. And it needs the help up in the basal ganglia and brain. And so this is just the first. I'm gonna do some adjusting on the ribs today. And see if that helps too because okay. often it will i got a parkinson's patient that when i do it you know, literally i'll start to ptlms and he straightens up and that's the rib area that i need to do the adjusting on it's <laughs> pretty cool what do you think that was interesting <laughs> that was pretty
pretty awesome. Melissa? 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 Melissa?